welcome to the award-winning show, Holding Down the Fort by U.S. Vet Wealth. We return for season six to answer the biggest question for career military families. So when are we going to get out? And everything involved with answering this question. I'm Jen Amos, creator and co-host of Holding Down the Fort and a Gold Star family member and veteran spouse. And I'm Jenny Lynn Stroop, co-host and chief shower upper here on Holding Down the Fort. Together, we will converse with special guests from and for our military community to share knowledge and resources and relevant stories on how we can best hold down the fort while on active duty, going through transition, and into post-military life. Now, let's get into the show. All right. Hello, Jenny Lynn. Hi. <laughs> For the first time this season, I think since episode one of season six, we are catching our breath and slowing down if we haven't slowed down already. But, you know, just taking a minute to take a break from our interviews to connect as co host and check in with all of you. I know that sometimes listeners, after a while, they're like, well, what about like Jen and Jenny Lynn, though? You know, what about them? What about their story? And although we're not going to go into depth with our personal stories today, I hope that this is a, a treat for all of you that it's just Jen Amos and Jenny Lynn Stroop. Jenny Lynn, any opening thoughts? I mean, we have been at it with pre interviews and interviews pretty much since February, April. Like it's been months since we've just kind of, you know, had our blinders on, yeah. you know, producing the show this year. Yeah. I mean, I guess first, like, I really love our new format. Like, I mm -hmm. love that we do the pre interviews. I love that we get the opportunity to meet with the guests we bring on, really kind of hone in on their story and how it fuels the holding down the fort <laughs> story, and that we get to be a part of that and have met, you know, such great people we consider part of the holding down the fort family now. Yeah. It's been really fun, but you're right. Like, I think, what was it, two Tuesdays ago, we didn't have any recordings booked. And I was like, what's happening? My Tuesday is weird. Like, why are we not talking? What's going yeah. on? Because it's just such, I mean, it's such a fun part of my week. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I enjoy connecting with you as much as I enjoy connecting with our guest, And especially being remote work. And I know you get this too, working in an office of one. You know, mm -hmm. it is just so great to take a break from the work to sit down and talk to people and like hear their stories. So I really <laughs> love the way we're doing it. But yes, it has been since the beginning of the year. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It has. I mean, if I were to pull up my calendar, I'm pretty sure like our first pre interview was probably back in February. Like it mm -hmm. was way back when. And yeah, it's wild. I mean, I kind of liked doing that because Part of why in the past, like for our listeners, you may have noticed that we, you know, only publish once a week as opposed to three times a week, <laughs> like what we used to do in the past. And part of that is because, you know, I personally have been wanting to focus more on my in-person life. You know, Scott and I have been settled in our current place since last December. And there's nothing more I wanted than to root myself. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's odd because when I think about it, it's like, you know, I was a military child like 20 plus years ago. And here I am still kind of repeating that story. Like I always seem to re reinvent myself or something shifts every like two to three to five years. And last December, I was like, I'm done with this. I'm done. Like, I'm done with traveling. I don't care what anyone has to say about that remote life, you know, working remotely, like it's lonely, it could be really lonely. And Part of why I had really leaned into podcasting and pumping out all those episodes in the last seasons with you was because that was my way of mm -hmm. friend, mm -hmm. connected, of staying grounded, of knowing what was going out in the world while we all were stuck at home. So this year has been fruitful for so many reasons. One of my friends, they recently released my interview on their show, and we recorded this at the beginning of the year. And it was interesting to hear it eight months later. And at that time, I was still in this like, I wouldn't say like survival mode, but definitely like I was hustling still in that time. And not mm -hmm. that I'm not hustling right now. It's just that I was so much in this like, I want to get rooted. And now I can say, 
like I feel as rooted as I can at this point in my life. Mm-hmm. I'm really happy about that. And that really has reflected in our guests and the way mm-hmm. that we've slowed down, like you mentioned, and really getting to know the guest and, you know, hear out their stories and make this more of a collective effort mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. we do the interview, which I absolutely love. Like, you know, from the pre-interview to the actual interview and, you know, referring to Dennis all the time when we are recording live to sharing the title and show notes with the guests to make sure that we represented them as well as we could. It's been this beautiful, collaborative, like slow, but meaningful effort, you know, to amplify everyone, like not just us as co-hosts, but the people we bring on. And, and I'm just extremely grateful for the pace we've taken this year. Oh, same. Same. I mean, you know, and and for me, it's been such a good learning opportunity. I mean, if people have been around the show for a couple of seasons, they know that I came on as like an answer to a want ad in a (laughs) newsletter, basically. (laughs) I'm here because there was a newsletter opportunity that I happened to respond to. And, you know, I think this is what the for it. I mean, I'm coming up on my two year anniversary is holding yeah. on for it podcast co host. And it's been a really good learning experience for me. And I think we have evolved as a team. And it's been fun to like learn and grow and see the different sides. I mean, we make jokes all the time on here that I'm like the chief shower upper. I'm also now the chief inviter. Like, let's yeah. just throw that yeah. out there. You've been so wonderful at that, like bringing on all these incredible people and I look them up later. I'm like, oh, we're going to do that person. Okay. Okay. Jen got to be more professional next time. You know, like, yeah. So I behind the it. scenes, nothing, you know, nothing says more professional than all of the technology failing on the day that we interview like the media person. That was great. Oh, yeah. You know. That was so funny. And we so actually, appreciate. I mean, y'all can listen to that. That episode's already out, but it was just so funny. Like after the fact, I was just like laughing at myself. And the good thing was when I was listening to the edits after Dennis made them, I was like, okay, like, I'm so glad for Dennis. I, <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, and I was like, oh my gosh, I promise you, like, I'm moderating this panel in Disney, which we'll get into in a little bit here, but like, I am not really <laughs> like this. But you know, what? I forgive myself because it's been a long year and we've been hosting the show for many seasons now, as you mentioned, and we're going to have some hiccups and that's okay. Mm-hmm. And that is partly why we pre-record these so we can have people like Dennis like make us sound amazing. But I do believe that that episode will turn out well. I did listen to it. I was like, okay, it does not sound like we were off that day. <laughs> There's like a thunderstorm, like power, <laughs> electricity, like mics went out. It was great. Yeah, it was great. Wi-Fi went mm. out. It was, yeah, it was yeah. just like the most hilarious. Like I'm still laughing about it. I was telling Scott about it. I was like, you should have been there. Like even you would have been like just laughing at me. It was, it was pretty comical. But it's fun. It's fun to like have those shared experiences Mm -hmm. with you. And Mm -hmm. we're not perfect at this. And I think that's part of why it's always important for me. Like I had a nonprofit, I can't say their names yet because it's not official yet. Or it is official, but they haven't produced content yet. But you know, a nonprofit had reached out to me to help host their virtual conference. And they had said that, yeah, I'll tell you offline what it is. But they had said that the reason why they reached out is because they really like our casual approach to talking to people. Like, I mean, yes, it probably would be ideal if we sounded a little more uptight and professional, but I'm a civilian. You know, yes, I'm a Gold Star family member and a veteran spouse, but I'm a civilian. And part of what I try to do on these shows is to be as human Mm -hmm. as possible Mm -hmm. because I can't be anyone but me, you know, because then it's going to show you're going to hear it through our recordings and you're going to hear like, oh, Jen's uptight, you know, but I hope that in this whole process, like everyone feels like they know us, they feel like they're friends with us and that we are Mm -hmm. approachable because that's really, you know, Mm -hmm. one of the big things we talk about on our show is community building. And so I hope that our approach makes you all feel like you can be in community with us. Well, I think that addresses some of the questions we've gotten too. like we just got one today during a pre-interview about like, so what do you consider a season? I think we both look at that and go, well, we both come from a pretty long military background. So it is what you can make it. And quite honestly, like, I think that's great. Allowing each other the humanness and flexibility to do this in a way that builds community and allows for life to happen is really outside of, you know, a growing relationship with you is is one of my favorite things about doing this is there is all those allowances. And I think our guests feel that when they come on of like, hey, mm-hmm. we're really happy to have you here. And also like, 
mics are going to go out. Thunderstorms yeah. are going to happen. We're going to thank Dennis a hundred times an episode <laughs> that no one's going to hear on the back end. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, I like that about this. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm glad that you feel that way. And I think it puts the pressure off both of us to mm-hmm. be a certain way and to act a certain way. And I'm grateful. You know, I think that's yeah. part of the beauty of being an independent podcaster is our show is literally what we make of it <laughs> and when we make mm-hmm. it. Mm hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of like all the notes I had today. Speaking of being really professional, though, I mean, we just (laughs) talked about all the ways in which like we're very laid back and kind of roll with what's going on. But being very professional, I mean, you have been invited to do something really fun. Yes. And I am so excited (laughs) that I hold the title as co-host of Holding Down the Fort podcast. So That means I get to do something really fun. So why don't you tell everybody what we're getting ready to go do? Yes, that's right. So this episode will be published after we've done this incredible, exciting thing. And let me start by saying that the majority of the work that Jenny Lynn and I do is virtual. Even though we are like sort of neighbors at this point, like We have done this remotely. We've done this from home or in, you know, in my office in this sense. And so I say that because I literally don't know who's listening. I mean, unless people email us like Mm -hmm. David Thorpe. So shout out to David (laughs) because he used to email us quite frequently. Like, I mean, I can see the downloads. I can see where people are listening from, but I can't see exactly like who is listening to the show. And so somehow a Disney employee heard our podcast and had decided to reach out to me because since 2012, the Walt Disney Company has what they call a Heroes Work Here initiative. And this initiative is all about hiring, training, and supporting military veterans and military spouses. And this initiative alone has resulted in more than 10,000 veterans joining the Walt Disney Company since its launch in 2012. Now, the interesting thing about this initiative is Most of it has been primarily around veterans and veteran employment. In fact, they have an event called the Veterans Institute Summit, and it's a complimentary event created to inspire business professionals and organizations utilizing actionable insights from the Walt Disney Company's Heroes Work Here initiative. And, you know, the whole idea is to educate how could we provide more employment to veterans. Now, for the longest time, like I said, it's primarily been veterans. Mm -hmm. But now this year, they wanted to recognize spouses and military spouse employment. I've been talking with the team. And part of the reason why they reached out to me is because they were so humble to say, hey, we don't know much about military spouse employment. We are not the experts here. So we want to bring on experts to speak on our behalf, you know, to be able to educate us, you know, Disney employees about the struggles of military spouse employment or unemployment and what can we do and how can we educate other companies on how to, you know, see the value in military spouses and hire them and everything. And so I'm extremely excited. I mean, this is already this has already been, happened, but last week or last I'm going to say like this month, this this month, what happened on August 19th and 20th is that Jenny Lynn and I were able to attend the Veterans Institute Summit by Disney Institute to moderate. I mean, me specifically, Jenny Lynn is tagging along because I need her. I'm the best <laughs> plus one. I'm you are so the, You are the best plus one, <laughs> especially because we went to Disney World too. And I'm sure we'll mention this in the upcoming recordings here. I get to but, be the um, fun boss in this, the chief <laughs> fun instigator here. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. And so I have been so fortunate to be invited to host, I think this is their first panel, the first military spouse employment panel, and be able to talk to the experts. And I think I'll mention this probably in the pre-recording. I might insert this later because I don't want to butcher anyone's names. But to be able to moderate this panel of incredible individuals who have really pushed for military Mm -hmm. spouse remote work, military spouse entrepreneurship, and just overall military spouse employment, including not just what most people perceive as female spouses, but male spouses and caregivers. I'll read a little bit of the description here for this panel. So it states that studies show service member spouses tend to experience unemployment and underemployment at a significantly higher rate than their peers. Begin to think differently about the appearance of resume experience gaps, frequent job changes, and other relevant topics. So it's interesting because they purposely wanted it to, although it sounds specific, it's actually really vague. And like the team mentioned this because they wanted us to be mm-hmm. the experts and that we they wanted us to explain what military spouse employment is and all that. 
And so I'm just excruciatingly honored. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's the right phrase there, but I'm just so honored that they had recognized our work on holding down the fort to select myself as the only non-Disney employee to facilitate. Because they even said at the beginning of our virtual rehearsal, they said, you may notice that there is not a Disney facilitator here. That's because we wanted to bring on Jen, you know, who hosts the show, because we know that we're not the experts. So it's truly like, even though it's just one panel, like, it's like the best panel. And the fact that they had listened to my show, apparently they know our stories inside and out, Jenny Lynn. So, <laughs> so don't get creeped out if they start like talking about like whatever they know about you and me. But like they know us inside and out and they know our initiatives. They know, you know, who we are professionally and our personal stories. And they have, you know, handpicked, you know, me to moderate this. So I'm really grateful about that, you know, especially because I started holding on the fort like with an ounce of imposter syndrome, you know, thinking like, you know, who am I, this gold star family mm -hmm. member and veteran spouse to uh, really advocate for military spouses and families. And yet here I am now, you know, being able to work with the Disney Institute's Veterans Institute Summit, moderating a panel about military spouse employment. I'm just, I'm extremely grateful. And I'm just happy that you're going to be there. You're like, you're going to be like my support system because, you know, you've been part of this journey with me. And obviously, you get a benefit in so many other ways, which we'll begin to reveal in upcoming episodes. I mean, the blurb you read about military spouse employment is just something so close to my heart as an active duty military spouse. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I shared with you, I'm not sure if it made it to an episode or not, but I was recently in an interview for a new position. And the very first question is, what are you most proud of like in your career? And I half jokingly replied, like having one <laughs> question yeah, yeah. mark, exclamation <laughs> mark, because I started my adult life with a career that required a license, which mm -hmm. wasn't going to transfer every time we moved. And so, you know, to have been gainfully employed for almost three years now with the same organization that allowed me to work remotely for the last year and a handful of months to now be transitioning into another remote position mm -hmm. speaks volumes of how far we've come in military spouse employment. But, you know, there is, you know, as a group, the largest unemployed <laughs> group yeah. out there. Yeah, statistically. And so to think that it's getting traction by a company world renowned for their business practices mm -hmm. is really cool. And to get to go with you and be your plus one and represent holding down the fort and also being an active duty military spouse, like I'm over the moon. Also, I'm a, a complete Disney nerd. <laughs> having worked there in college, like it is one of my most favorite places. And so all of the things about this make me so very happy. Yeah. And I am, you know, really, really proud of the way that you facilitate this show that it is recognized by other folks to be yeah. able to have opportunities like this. Yeah. I that you include me, that you look at us yeah. as a team. I really like that is something that is very special to me. Well, of course. Oh, just hugs all around. Hugs and love. <laughs> I'm really grateful. And it's a team effort. I mean, the show started as a team effort. I mean, initially with, you know, my team at US Vet Wealth and it expanded. And there are some times where I do forget to make sure to credit the team. But whenever I, I do have that self awareness, like I do make sure that you're involved. And of course, I had plenty of space in the hotel. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Scott wasn't going to bring the dog and that would have been really complicated. And then the cat, we have a cat now. So that that's a whole other different layer. So yeah, but the last thing I want to add to that as we wrap up here is that I mentioned earlier, like how we have been doing the show virtually for a very long time. And like I said earlier also is that I don't know who's listening. So the fact that mm -hmm. like someone from Disney heard, I, I remember asking them, I said, they said, oh, someone someone recommended your show. And I was like, who? Like, who Who was it? They, they never told me. They, they never told me. I yeah. mean, I don't know if they meant to keep that a secret on purpose, but I think it just it was just one of those like <laughs> little things where I probably could have persisted and found out. But, you know, the, the reason why this is so important to me and why it means so much to us is like, this is a manifestation of our work. Mm -hmm. Even though it's really just us all the time. And then, of course, we have a guest on here. People are listening. Mm -hmm. Influential people are listening. And 
I don't take that for granted. I'm incredibly grateful and honored and humbled that our work is of value to an organization such as the Disney Institute. So I'm sure we'll have more reflections later, especially when we actually go to it. Right now, we are recording this before we go to Disney World, mainly because I want to make sure we have a vacation after the vacation (laughs) when, when we're back and kind of take that breather. And we have more updates to come. And so I think, you know, later on when we're ready to connect again as co-host for our listeners. I'm sure we'll have a ton of more updates. But until then, you know, thank you, Jenny Lynn, for believing in me, believing in our team. And and Matthew, too. This is an extension to Matthew because I know Matthew is there in the background listening. And I mean, not literally, but I know he listens to the show. So shout out to Matthew and just your belief in our work together. I know we're going to have a great time at Disney World. I already anticipate it. And we look forward to giving you all an update once you know, once we do, once we feel like it. <laughs> so, yep. yeah, but we're going to wrap up here. Jenny Lynn, any final closing thoughts? No, looking forward to our trip. Yes. And yes. More interviews to come. Yes. More interviews to come. All right. Well, with that said, thank you all. We hope you enjoyed this short co-host check-in conversation. And I mean, I guess if you want to get a hold of us, you can find us in the show notes. I usually say that for a guest, so I might as well mention that we're in the show notes. Oh, and if you like our show, I know we mentioned this in the outro, but you know, I do provide links to our LinkedIn recommendation if you want to leave one. So feel free to do that. But anyway, we are going to wrap up. Appreciate you all. Thank you for being a part of our journey and seeing value in our candidness. (laughs) I think that's what I'm most proud of is that Mm -hmm. we are both like totally ourselves and Mm -hmm. people see value in that. It's an honor. And that's it. We'll chat with you all in the next episode. Tune in next time. Hey, thanks again for joining us at Holding Down the Fort by U.S. Vet Wealth. Once again, I am your co-host, Jen Amos. And I'm Jenny Lynn Stroop. Thank you so much for listening to our show. If you've gotten a lot out of our conversation today, be sure to leave us a five-star rating review on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. Or you can leave us a kind LinkedIn recommendation on our LinkedIn profiles. Learn more about Holding Down the Fort by visiting holdingdownthefortpodcast.com. And there you'll also be able to find us on social media and how to contact us directly. Thank you all so much for joining us. Until next time. Oh, 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 o